Welcome back to Investing in Trading Live, sponsored by Trading Academy. But back in the last segment, we were getting into strategies on the income side of things for people that want to buy their life back, get their time back, but also have a strategy that's designed to build and create that wealth strategy. If you missed seats for that investing class, simply just text the word investing to the number 210210. That's for two seats right here at the Academy. Or you can go to otamin.com. That's OTA. M-I-N-N.com. We also love our subscribers and followers on the podcast, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. That's investing and trading live. So, Al, in that last segment, you were talking about those different strategies that are designed to create that income strategy, but also strategies to build that wealth. And that's what I want to discuss on this segment here is what are those strategies to build wealth, whether it's 401ks, IRAs, and how can us as everyday people or retail investors take advantage of those strategies? Well, in, in order to actually be able to generate wealth, you have to get the income part down first. If you don't have enough income from your job after you pay your bills and you've had some fun with your lifestyle, there's no nothing that goes into your retirement bucket. I mean, yep. that, that retirement bucket, your wealth bucket, is fueled by an, an extra amount of money from your income. So if, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, like we said before, the, the people that are making over 150000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. That doesn't bode well for the future for a lot of people. And if you look at the, the 401k balances, the median balance, uh, and this is for people that are 65, is $70,620. The, you know, the golden rule used to saying, yeah, maybe you need to have more like, like $2 million. So how do you do that if you don't have extra income? Well, the income strategies that we talked about, futures was one, forex is another, options is another, there is a way to use stocks for income, but that's all part of a plan and all part of managing your assets. Once you get that wealth bucket built, then what do you have to have? I think there's three components that are necessary. One is protection, because you don't you don't want to work 30, for example, and have 20 to 50 or 60 percent of what you worked all those years for taken away. So protection has to be number one, mm -hmm. and then you have to have an income source. The income from your job is gone. We can show you assets that you can trade in retirement to generate income off of whatever you have, whatever your retirement pile of money is. And then also you have to have access to or, or exposure to the market in, in some form. Uh, if you don't, you're not going to get the returns you need to make it through 20, 30, 40 years in retirement. We just heard that the average return for 401ks last year, 2023, when we had a, a stellar market, the average return for 401ks was 6%. If you go back to 2022, the average, and this is this includes many multi-million dollar accounts, but the average 401k value in 2022 was $112,572. The year before, 2021, it was $141,542. So that's the average retirement balance, you're saying? That's average, Which, but that also, as I mentioned, takes into consideration people that might have you know, maybe $100 million. So when you yeah. look at the median, which means that half is above that, half below it, it's $70,000. Kind of the rule of thumb now, or the advice by advisors, is you need to have, when you retire, at least 10 times what your high salary was. So mm -hmm. if you were earning 150000 you need a million five. Not many people have reached that million dollar yeah. uh, number in retirement. So it requires people, unfortunately, sometimes to take risks they shouldn't take. That's the last thing you want to do in retirement is take risks that's not managed mm -hmm. and do something that you don't understand. Well, there is some good points to that, though, because you mentioned the average is, what, 100 and, is 112,000? The average in 2022 was uh, 112,000. Okay, so that's so. Let's just say somebody does have that average, just as an example, mm -hmm. 112,000 in their retirement account. Okay, well, what are their options? They can a hope that lasts them for 10, 20, 30 years. Li hopefully, live off a little bit of Social Security, which I think the average is around what 1,500 bucks a month or something. Yeah, yeah, Whoop de do. Say 18 grand a year. Yeah, which you, I mean, that's not even a, a, a home a house payment. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have their houses paid off. So they have choices now. The good thing is they have something. There are strategies to use that wealth bucket to have an income strategy off of. There, a lot of people are using options to do that because Correct. they're using small amounts of, of that retirement bucket to create an income strategy. 
Um, they're, they're also using parts of that as an income strategy with futures or Forex. So if they don't have enough to, to retire, they have something, why not utilize it? I was talking with a good friend a, a while back, and it's kind of a sad thing to say, but he's like, well, I can either die a slow death or I can do something about it. And that's what a lot of people that are coming to the academy for is they have ambition and they want to do something about it. And it takes action to do that and they want to do that right now. So if you want to have that opportunity to be able to do those fun things and be able to dictate what your life looks like at retirement time, you might want to get started now rather than later. We have investing classes to discuss what these opportunities are. We're going to show you what these what these techniques are, what these strategies are. So that way you at least know what are your options, no pun intended, to be able to live in the life that you choose to live. Come into one of these investing classes and get started today. Simply just text the word investing to the number 210, 210 right now for two seats. Text the word investing to the number 210, 210 right now. Al, I mentioned a couple words there, some terminology, options being one of them. Now, you, I think you know what strategy I'm talking about there with options. What, why, why might somebody want to look at the options market? I'm not saying it's right for everybody. But what might, why might somebody want to look at that if they do have, say, 112000 which is the average? Right. Well, options can be used for a number of benefits. Number one, it can be used as protection. So basically, it's, it's the equivalent of having an insurance policy on your portfolio. So the value of a stock can go down, but by using a particular option, the overall value of your portfolio doesn't go down. It might even go up in value. You can use options to generate kind of the equivalent of a dividend. So if you have some growth stocks that aren't paying dividends, you can use an option to generate income off of that particular asset. If you have a stock that's paying dividends, you can boost the overall returns in addition to the dividend by using options to do that. You can get into positions for uh, maybe a, a several hundred dollars that might cost you several thousand dollars if you actually bought the stock. You actually get paid with options to wait for price to go down so you can buy something lower, you get paid to wait until the price goes up so you can sell something at a higher price. You can wrap options around pretty much any component of the market that you might be invested in. Uh, so it's an asset that is definitely worth learning about. I, I would say most of our students at some point in time, they have a, a deep desire to learn about yeah. options. Did you mention the leverage on that? It, it, up to 10 to 1, roughly? Yeah, it depends on what you're trading. It could be 10 to 1, could be more than that. So, so let's, someone ha- let's just say someone has that average. Sure. You said 100, we'll say $100,000. Mm-hmm. At, at 10 to 1, what does that mean? What will that act like or the buying power? Well, if you have $100,000 and you have 10 to 1 leverage, you're looking at a million dollars. Okay, well, it, good it, math. It, math. It, I was it, making it, sure you had that math, yeah. that math skill with you today. Even, folks, I don't have a calculator my hand. I just did it off the top of my head. For those people watching the YouTube, he does not have a calculator in his hand. But, you know, that was, I kind of threw a softball up there for you. Yeah, you know, I want to comment on that, though. Uh, If you have a million dollars, let's just say you have a million dollars in your portfolio, and you are following what the advisors have uh, really advised for years, and that's this 4% rule, where you can take out 4% of your money every year, and you should be okay going through the rest of your retirement. Uh, What's four percent? The way 40, it is, I'm 40, not sure that you can do that. But that's forty thousand dollars. The average that can't reti- get you anything. Well, the average retiree spends about fifty-seven thousand dollars a year. So that you, that included with your Social Security basically gets you to almost a break-even. So that's at a million dollar portfolio. That's a million dollar portfolio. Al, I want to. You know what? I don't want to cut you out here off here, but I am going to cut you off. I want to discuss that in the next segment here because okay. I think that's an important concept. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. If people have a million dollars and that four percent rule is what the quote unquote advisors are saying you live off of, that's not a lot of money. I want to talk about why that's a terrible strategy if you don't have a million dollars. Right, what's four percent of hundred hundred ten thousand? Not very much. Yeah. So let's talk about that in the next segment because I think that's important for our listeners to understand. But you know, these concepts and techniques that we're, that we've been discussing, we cover all of this in these investing classes. We have investing classes right here in Bloomington. We're providing financial literacy to all of our listeners, really worldwide. We got listeners in every city, almost every single city in the U.S. We're in a couple different countries, especially on our podcast. So we've been really appreciating all these listeners on the podcast that's investing and trading live on all the different podcast sites. But locally here in in Minneapolis, we have an academy in Bloomington. We're going to your backyard with these investing.
testing classes as well. We're seeing that people just don't want to drive somewhere sometimes. So we're coming to your backyard. If you're in the Bloomington area, come here. We, you can see our facility. We've got a state-of-the-art facility. We're in Blaine. We do classes in Waconia. We do classes in Edina, Maple Grove. Uh, where else are we at? Uh, Sh- Shakopee, Woodbury. We're going all over the metro. We're coming to a hometown near you. That way you can get started with these financial markets. Simply text the word investing to the number 210, 210 right now for two seats. I didn't say right meow. I said right now. Text investing to the number 210, 210 for two, two seats. You get a text right back with our link so you can go right to our landing page and pick your own date and location. Al, coming up next, we've had a good show here. I want to talk about more strategies on income, more strategies on wealth, but also what it actually looks like to be a trader investor. So our listeners understand having your money work for you and not working harder for that. This is Josh and Al. We will be right back.